everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I'm going to do something that surprisingly I don't think I've done before on this channel. Today we are going to dye some semi-solid, or maybe mostly solid, roving. Yep, I'm going to mix a dye bath of a solid color, pre-soak our roving, add it to the pot, and we'll see how solid or not of this roving that we will get. Today I have 100 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes roving. This roving is 100% Peruvian Highland wool and it's one that I dye and spin with a lot here on the channel. And so I'm really excited to go and give this a shot. If you would like to learn more about the roving, you can find my affiliate link in the video description. With any 100% wool roving, really any unspun fiber, you do want to make sure you handle it with some care because you don't want to end up felting it. So really you want to avoid any sort of like rubbing type motions. But I found that some gentle pressing doesn't really cause too much of an issue. If I wanted a little more tonal variation in the fiber, I could add this to my dye pot dry. Um, but I am going for, I guess, more of a solid versus the semi. I still think that we will see a little tonal variation in here, but I could be surprised. I haven't tried this yet. Anyway, I am going to pre-soak this fiber at room temperature in plain tap water for at least 20 minutes. Here I have my dedicated dye pot and I have added 12 cups of tap water. I was actually starting to heat it up when I remembered, oh right, I want to add things in cold. <laughs> so I almost forgot. But to our 12 cups of water, I'm now going to add one, two, three, four, five tablespoons of white vinegar. Now, for the dye today, we are going to use a really old dye stock. I made this about a year ago. Um, this is Jacquard Fire Red. This started off as a 1% stock solution, and I now will say 1% in quotes because I'm sure that the concentration has changed over time. Um, but let's see. That's one. Two, three, all right, about three quarters of a cup of the Jacquard Fire Red into our pot. That is about 180 milliliters of the stock solution, which is about 1.8 grams of the red dye. I do want to add a little more color. I know, I know. So I'm going to add a little bit of this Jacquard Pink. This is also a stock solution that I made about a year ago. And I'm going to go ahead, actually let's add three quarters of a cup of this as well. Now, the red is way more pigmented than the pink. Um, there is no doubt or question about that. Here is our pre-soaked roving. I gently squeezed out some of that water. And now I am going to add it to our pot. Um, sort of poke it in a bit. Make sure it's all fluffed out. And now I'm going to wash my hands and we'll turn on the heat. The heat is currently on high, but I do plan on adjusting that as things go on. Right now it looks like we have a beautiful cranberry, um, it's almost like a cool red, which, you know, as I said, it feels like that this red and pink have a similar sort of tone in terms of their warmth, but I'm very excited to see just how solid versus semi this roving will feel in the end. It's been 15 minutes since I turned on the heat, and I'm just starting to see some bubbles form. And ooh, look at this red we've got going on. The camera almost can't handle it. 
there's still a lot of pigment in here. Um, and I know you don't want to move roving a lot in the pot, but I just want to see we do have a lot of color. I'm doing some gentle pokes to help give the fiber access to the dye. And, you know, there is a lot of dye in here, but I wanted to go for it with pigmentation. I'm going to reduce the heat to medium. Um, as I said, we started from a really cool temperature, so as we're heating this up, um, it really hasn't been heating for quite 15 minutes, but I'm going to give it another 15, and we'll come back. And I'm going to keep an eye on it to try to keep those bubbles sort of small so there's not a ton of agitation from heating up the fiber. After those 15 minutes, we truly did have a full-on bubble moment, and I had to reduce the heat even further. Uh, but you know, stuff happens. The water is starting to clear. There is a tiny bit more color in. I mean, it looks like more than a tiny bit, but given the depth of shade that we have going on, um, that is not bad, not bad at all. I am going to go ahead and add some more vinegar. Let's go ahead and do one two, yeah, almost three more tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'm going to oh so gently pop this down. There we go. And I'm actually going to turn off the heat. This will be warm in here for a while. Um, so I don't think that we need the additional heat to worry about any felting or anything like that. Um, I'm gonna let it cool, maybe not completely, but for a while in the pot to see if we can soak up some of that remaining color. The fiber is still warm, but most, if not all, of the color has cleared. So I'm now very carefully, with the use of my tongs, I am going to remove this fiber from the dye pot. Lifting it up, and I'm not even letting a lot of the water drain out, but I'm moving it aside so that way it can really start to cool. I don't want to wash it yet because I don't want to risk felting anything, but um, I do want to set that aside. And we can see there is some color behind, but it's not an extreme amount. We have our cooled off red, red, red roving. And I have to say, it is looking quite solid. I'm really excited to see it dry, to see just how solid it really is versus um, being semi-solid. And so far, maybe a hint of pink. I do want to add a tiny bit of this soap to the red. Not a lot. Uh, I would still, even without a ton of bleeding now, I would still be hesitant to use this as something white. Um, even though like my gut is like, ooh, I should spin this and then pair it with a white yarn. That would be so, so pretty. But I'd be really, really nervous about the red bleeding onto the white just because it is such a saturated color. Um, I'm trying to be very gentle, and even though I'm moving it through here, I'm trying not to rub it. I feel like it's at this washing stage. Actually, that's looking pretty clear. I feel like it's at this washing stage where people are most at most risk to felt the roving. Especially because when you look at it, you're like, oh no, that's so matted. And that's because when they're wet, the fibers stick to each other more. And so you're not going to really see... Um, until it's dry, just how like fluffy it still is. But um, I would probably lay it. I'm being really bad by squeezing it. Um, it would be safer to lay this on a towel and roll it up to squeeze out some water. But I'm actually going to take this as is go hang it up to dry, and I'll come back when it's dry and we'll take a look at our fiber. But there might be some dark and light patches in here. It's really hard to say since it's wet because there could be areas with more and less wet. 
Hello Pigment! We got our roving this beautiful red cranberry color and oh I really really like it. I am so excited. You can definitely see that even though we've got this really great saturated red there is some tonal variation throughout this roving. Uh, it's not the light or anything there are lighter patches and darker patches which now that the roving is dry is a lot easier to see. This is gonna add dimension to it when you spin. Um, I'm just showing how like light and fluffy the, the roving is, um, but they, these subtle color changes will bring it dimension and give us a beautiful, beautiful tonal hand spun yarn. I just took a moment to just sort of fluff the fiber up a bit because sometimes like when you dye roving and it dries, it can look, not that it's matted because it's still fluffy, but it can sort of block itself and not feel as perfect and fluffed as when you get the fresh roving. I honestly don't know how other indie dyers make their roving look so fluffed and beautiful if they do a lot of fluffing after, um, but I do know that I feel like other people are in the same boat, that when it's wet, the fibers collapse a little bit, you lose a little bit of that air, and while it's not felted, it doesn't look um, straight off the drying rack as beautiful as it did in the beginning. So like a minute fluffing it out made it look a lot prettier, in my opinion. Ooh, I feel like this braid shows off the dimension that we have here so, so nicely. I don't often dye semi-solids, but when I do, I feel really excited. Semi-solids are actually one of my favorite yarns to knit with because I love the subtle changes while still being able to do a complex pattern or something with it. While there was no bleeding while we were washing this roving, it is important to keep in mind that when you're using something really pigmented, if you're gonna mix this with something that's not pigmented, there stood, still could be some bleeding later on. Um, this is one reason why you should always wash hand dyed things in cool water. Acid dyes will bleed in really hot water uh, because the heat will disrupt the interaction with the fibers. It's just one of the nature of this dye type. Uh, but it is always sort of a concern if you have a bright red and you mix it with a white, you might end up with a pink. Thankfully, I haven't experienced that myself, but it's something that if you did want to try applying this with a white, um, maybe take a little bit and make like a one yard like, piece of yarn, wet it, do a little swatch test before committing to doing a beautiful candy cane yarn only to have your white turn pink later on. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching this video. I honestly cannot believe I had not done a semi-solid roving yet, and I'm so glad that this turned out so beautiful. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new yarn or roving dyeing videos every single week, and we really have a lot of fun. If you would like to support Chemnitz and the content that we continue to create, there are a few ways you can do that. One, we have an Etsy store where we sell yarn and even some hand spun that has been featured in past and upcoming YouTube videos. Another way you can support us is through the Chemnitz Patreon, where as a patron, you can get early access to a new yarn dyeing video every month, behind the scenes sneak peeks, advanced notice of shop restocks, and more. You can find more information about all of this in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.